What's going on YouTube? It's the Green Chiz. We are coming off of one of the biggest auctions to happen in 2021 through Golden. And it was a banger. Let me just start with that. There was crazy million dollar plus items. Just absolutely insanity. Comic books, video games, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Fortnite cards. The Fortnite thing was like the last thing to sell. Um, let, We're going to get into how it went versus other auction systems some of the highs some of the lows and go through some of the video games and pokemon stuff and touch on the Yu-Gi-Oh. there was a lot of, not much Yu-Gi-Oh going on but we're going to touch on it all we're going to get into that right here <laughs> absolute insanity we started off with insane video game block so coming off of the 1.5 million dollar sale of the n64 mario game that sold two months ago we just had one sell last night for about seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars, about half the price in the same exact grade um that does seem like more of an accurate price for that game the other one was a sale it did happen the guy got paid but this is more realistic, we think, in the, in the least, not we, but the people in the industry, in the video game, deep into the market, that seems much more realistic, and it definitely makes sense. Um, there was one that was a VGA 95 uncirculated that sold for sad much less than that, um, about a quarter of that, approximately. Um, so that was pretty unfortunate. That definitely had a lot more potential. But now, I'm going to jump into some of the highlights of the video game sales. And then we're going to jump into more of the Pokemon stuff. But first, the biggest thing that I saw was the highest ever sale of this Sonic. Number one release, $430,000. This game has never sold this high. And this is the highest ever selling Sega Genesis game. It's on the map. It's on the map. What's next? Hopefully Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because I love that game on the second Genesis. I don't it's unmatched. I love that game. Next, S Super Mario Bros. 2, the highest ever sale for this item at $136,000 after the buyer's premium. Absolutely insane. Knocked it out of the park. Um going to get into a little bit further down how I felt about this whole format as well because no just don't like it um Super Mario Brothers number one for the NES sold for six hundred and seventy six thousand dollars this was only a 9.2a but it was a hang tab edition um great sale this is a record for this game this game, what the, what the, twelve thousand three hundred dollars for the Minecraft for the Xbox three hundred and sixty. Wow, this is even a nine point eight. It was a nine point six eight plus plus. I, that's a wow. Um, up next, I got Goldeneye 007, record sale for this game. $59,000. 9.4 plus has a perfect seal. Also, Mortal Kombat, the highest ever selling fighting game that's ever sold. This was a 9.8 A+, almost a perfect seal, like the Mario 64. This one's not an A++. This sold for $81,000 for the... Uh, Super Nintendo. Absolutely insane. Also, coming up for the PlayStation 1, we had a 9.8 A++ Marvel vs. Capcom $47,000 sell price. Forty-seven dollars for a PlayStation 1 game. We're getting outside of the cardboard boxes. This is a plastic case, plastic seal, 47 Gs. Another fighting game that popped off, Street Fighter for the Super Nintendo, 
sold for $36,900. It is not Mortal Kombat. Obviously, as seen here in this price, it has the premium grade 9.8 A++. So now we know where it ranks. We know Mortal Kombat's number one. Street Fighter's not number one. So, jumping out of that, that's absolute insanity in the video games. And kind of touch on a little more video games, the Pokemon games. Just not going to share probably a picture of these, but I'm going to talk about it. So, the Bla there was a Blastoise game that sold that was the original print. It was a 9.4A+. Uh, Completely crapped the bed, um, in my opinion. $14,000, whereas the... A, like a uh, a later print sold for more in the VGA 85 not more but it was a VGA 85 a lesser grade sold for $11,000 so almost literally almost the same price so that one was a huge steal whoever picked that up congratulations can we talk about this Charizard this is not a 10 this is not a 10 which is why this is a pretty low price. $270,000 for a first edition base at Charizard is low. Um, they've been trending, I think, around three fifty dollars for a good condition. This is not. This has whitening on all the corners. You need to buy the card, not the grade, people. This one and others in this auction were 10s with old certs, and there's some whitening. Serious, serious. You need to stay tuned. You don't want to buy cards with whitening and they say 10 it's just a waste one of the biggest surprises for me for pokemon is this uncut sheet this is 16 hollows from japanese base set and it's not even a no rarity sold for forty thousand dollars i saw tca gaming do a complete shadowless uncut sheet hollows and it sold for like $24,000 on PWCC $40,000 uncut sheet about this big because it's only 16 hollows size of a comic book page and it's not even the original print so whoever bought that let me know what you're thinking I don't know about that one um, the bronze Squirtle statue sold for $62,000. That is an expensive paperweight. Expensive. It looks beautiful, but it's a paperweight. Some of the steals, I think, were the uh, PSA 9 complete sets that sold. PSA 9 first edition base sets. You could have picked it up for about $51,000 after the buyer's premium. Not bad. Um, also in this auction, the highest ever Yu-Gi-Oh! auctioned item of all time. Averaging around $48,000 a box, a case of first edition Legend of Blue Eyes booster boxes. And that was about the market price. So they just paid market price for 12 of them. Could you imagine buying a case of 12 a first edition base set Pokemon. They come in only six in a case. This was twelve. Could could be the same value in ten years. Even though it only came out a few years, three years after Pokemon here in the North Americas. But uh that might have been the biggest steal of a lifetime in the matter of ten years. We'll see. See where they turn up turn up again. Who bought those? I'm really curious. See how that plays out. Now I'm going to get into gold and auctions in general. The auction itself was good. Prices were good. Market's good. Some highs, some lows. The market system for the way they auction, the auction system is complete, utter garbage. In simple terms. Comparing to eBay, Heritage, and just those two for now. The ones most people, at least on my channel, will know. Heritage Auctions takes the cake. If you're talking high-end items and you're selling thousand plus dollars on each item, each item 
should deserve their own stage for a matter of five minutes like Heritage does when they have a super high-end item just auctioneer gets on stage it's a live auction there's actually like during their signature auctions and auctioneers on the stage hitting the gavel going once going twice and they're selling just the one item and then when it sells they bring in the next item now we're auctioning off this operating system and then everyone bids on that and then it sells and then you bring in the next item usually heritage on a tuesday will go through an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes for 170 card or 170 items auction block last night in golden auctions auction started at 9 30 p.m eastern standard time did not finish until after midnight the way they do their auctions is terrible um let me explain it to you the best way I can. Every item had an auction end at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you say there's five items and you only bid on one of those items before 10 p.m., at 10 p.m., the bids to the public close and only the bidders that bid on that item before 10 p.m. could bid on it after 10 p.m. So I'm only looking at this one item now because I only bid on the one item. And now after 10 p.m., if somebody places a bid after 10 p.m., it resets the timer to 30 minutes on that one item. So literally, somebody did that on the Sonic game and the Black Knight Fortnite card to where they went until the next day, which is absolute insanity. Two and a half hours almost of just, or an hour and a half of just extending the bits. It Insane. Just put it on a five minute block. It'll probably get more money because you have more bidders and you're not limiting just to the ones who made it in time before 10 p.m. That's my biggest pet peeve about Golden. There is good things. I'm going to mention what those are really shortly. That was the worst aspect of the auction. Me staying up till the next day to watch this thing end. And not being able to bid on items after 10 p.m. So at 10 p.m. I'm done unless I did bid on something. And I want to go into the after bidding, essentially. You're like in a breakout room, essentially, if you know what those are. You basically get put into a breakout room where you can only bid on the items you bid on. I don't, I, I don't see how that's uh, very good. Like I said, with really low-end items, sure. Burn them as whatever way you want. High-end items, thousand-plus dollars, up to a million dollars for the Batman. Give that thing its five minutes of fame and let everyone stare at it while old boy George is slamming a gavel down on the ground. It deserves it. eBay is okay because the auctions, you got to get, you know that you need to get your bid ins before it closes because it closes at 10 p.m. Ain't nothing going on after 10. That thing sold to the highest bidder at 10 p.m. Straightforward. Anybody in the world could bid on it up until 10 p.m. Golden Auctions, the best thing they do is the vetting process for new customers, new people coming in to bid on their site. When you create an account with Golden, you get a $10,000 limit. In order to extend or increase that, you need to then prove your worthiness. You gotta show them a bank statement, you gotta show them available credit line on a credit card, or a previous paid off invoice to another auction house. Doing that weeds out a bunch of bad eggs, let me tell you that. So I'm really curious to see how many of these don't get paid for, 
because likely this vetting process is pretty soundproof. Likely. Heritage? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there is a spending limit. I don't think I've tried to go over 10 grand. Um, so I'm not too familiar with it, but I don't think it's as extensive as the uh, Golden Auctions one. So I don't know. Pretty wild. Insane auction. Congratulations, Golden, on your first one. I look forward to your next one. I think you said it was in November. Um, so there's a month gap there. It's okay. Um, it's going to be a banger. I know Heritage Auctions has their signature auctions popping off in October for video games and trading cards. So stay tuned for those. Those went off crazy last time. This is going to be a ride. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> oh,